So once you are done in the recovery room, um, the recovery room nurse will be bringing you up to the second floor, inpatient floor, to your room that you'll be in here at the hospital. Um, once you get to the floor, we ask family to give us about 10 to 15 minutes just to get you settled. We're going to hook you up to our monitors, IV fluids, do an assessment, make sure you're comfortable, help you put lotion on if you need lotion on. Um, we ask that you keep visitors to a minimum right after surgery. Um, we have nothing against having visitors. They're allowed. Um, we actually have no visiting hours here at Oakley. If you can come and go as you please. The reason we re request having visitors at a minimum right after is maybe you're not going to be feeling the greatest or you're going to be really, really sleepy. And that sleep is going to be very beneficial to your recovery time. Uh, while you're here during the hospital, like I said, there is no visiting hours, set visiting hours. You can come and go as you please. Um, you'll also have a hospitalist that'll visit you during your hospital stay here. They're going to help us manage maybe your blood sugars, your blood pressure. If you're really nauseous or something like that, they'll help us ma manage that. Um, you'll also have a physician assistant or nurse practitioner um, that works with your surgeon or the hospitals that may be seeing you here in the hospital um, to help manage your care. I have a couple of pictures here of what the second floor um, rooms look like. This is one of our, our rooms here. As you can tell, um, there is a nice big recliner chair um, that you'll be using quite frequently or your guests can use for short periods of time too. We do have the blood pressure monitor up in the left-hand corner here um, that will be connected to you for a while. We also do have our little credenza here. Um, we have areas where we store your belongings and then we have um, areas where we store um, our extra pillows, supplies like that. And then we have this little machine here, it's called a SCD machine or sequential compression device. And this hooks up to, um, to uh, a sleeve that I'm gonna talk to you about a little bit later. We also do have a pullout couch here uh, that we are, have availability for one guest to stay overnight if, if you would like to have somebody stay overnight here with you if you have a long drive um, or if you just would feel more comfortable. So during the night, nursing staff comes in and out of the room frequently um, for reasons such as assessments, medications, helping you to the bathroom, all that good stuff. So if you are not a sound sleeper, I highly encourage bringing earbuds, listening to your music or something during the night, or earplugs um, if you are going to stay here in the hospital. There are certain hotels um, near, nearby that do provide a discount. Um, for family members that are traveling a long distance that want to stay here or stay near overnight and that you can find on our Oak Leaf website also. <clears throat> once in your room, uh, once we've gotten you settled, have done your assessment, got you hooked up, um, your family's in the room, maybe even a little bit before, we're going to have you start doing ankle pumps. Ankle pumps are quite honestly just pumping your feet back and forth, just like you would on a gas pedal. Helps um, increase circulation and helps prevent blood clots after surgery. The other thing we're going to have you do is initially, probably right when you get to the floors, we're going to have you take a deep breath and cough it out. Coughing and deep breathing helps expand your lungs and helps prevent any infection after surgery. Um, no matter what anesthesia you use, it makes your lungs a little sticky, so that coughing and also using our incentive spirometer, which I'm going to go over here in a minute, just helps open that up and helps prevent any uh, infection in your lungs after surgery and helps you get off the oxygen sooner. This is what we call an incentive spirometer. Um, most likely you will be seeing this in the pre-op bay because they're going to have you use this and measure your uh, level that you could get it to. What you would do is you will put this section here in your mouth and you're going to suck on it like a straw. When you suck on this like a straw, it brings this little blue disc and moves it up. As it moves it up, it also brings this little bobble here up. Your goal is to have this little bobble sticking right in the middle of this little side here. We will measure how the volume of how high you can get the incentive spirometer up. Don't be surprised after surgery if you cannot get it all the way to 3,000 or 3,500 or wherever you were before surgery because your lungs are a little sleepy. Um, that'll be something that you can work on independently. We want you to try and do this 10 times an hour. Doesn't mean you have to wake up to do it 10 times an hour, but while you're awake during the day, every time a commercial break comes on, pick it up, do two, because I did have somebody record once that in an hour there are 10 commercial breaks and you get your 10 in during that hour. If you're reading a book, every chapter you read, pick it up, do a couple. If you do fall asleep, you wake up, do a couple deep breaths and coughs, or use your incentive spirometer. That's something you can do on your own, and nursing staff will be asking um, when they come in the room if you've been working on that independently too. 
diet. Um, you'll be started on oral fluids <clears throat> if you're not experiencing any nausea sometimes, even in their recovery bay. Um, some people have already had a cup of coffee before they get up to the floor, just depending on how you're feeling. We'll gradually progress your diet, um, depending on how you're tolerating everything. Um, we want and advise you to go slow. So we'll start with clear liquids, coffee, juice, um, maybe some crackers, jello, and maybe your first meal will be like a soup and sandwich. We don't want you to have like a big meal right to begin with. Um, so we'll slowly increase your diet. Activity. Um, we really want you up moving around within first, the first four hours of returning from your surgery. Uh, that might be standing at the edge of your bed. It might be walking to the bathroom. Um, a lot of our doctors have a goal of 150 feet for that first ambulation. I do not say that to scare you. I just say that to prepare you. Um, people are doing so much better after surgery. Um, and we found that early ambulation not only helps with the recovery and healing process of your implantation, but it also helps prevent blood clots after surgery. Um, so be prepared that you'll be up moving around quickly. Um, you'll be expected to get up to your chairs for all meals. Um, that is actually an order we have um, from the surgeons. Um, dressing in street clothes the morning after surgery is going to occur, so make sure you bring cl comfy clothes to wear. Um, and, and like I said, some people even want to put their street clothes on or their own pajamas on when they get up to the floor, and that's totally okay. Um, like I said, it's very important to bring along those loose-fitting, comfortable clothes and shoes. Bowel and bladder. Constipation is very, very common after any type of surgical um, experience due to anesthesia. Um, pain medications and decreased activity and diet altercations. Um, we do start you on stool softeners twice a day right after surgery. Um, depending on what your physician has ordered, it'll depend on what you receive. There is information on all our stool softeners in the binder. We encourage you to continue taking them twice a day once you are home, especially if you are still taking narcotic pain medication and not quite as active. Um, and like I said, there's more information on the stool softeners covered in your binder. Drinking fluids, so drinking six to eight glasses of water a day helps with hydration. It also helps with preventing constipation and increasing your fiber, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Catheters, um, most of our patients do not come to the floor with catheters. Um, very, very rarely do I see a catheter up on the floor. Um, so just be prepared that when you do have to go to the bathroom, you'll be calling, calling the nurse and we'll be walking, ambulating to the bathroom to, to void. A catheter is something that um, is in your bladder and it collects the urine, um, but like I said, most patients do not come to the floor with them. Other equipment you'll have in your room, like I said before, there is that little uh, white machine that connects to the SCDs or the sequ sequential compression devices. This is what the sleeve looks like. This wraps around your calf and that is connected to that machine through the tube, it pumps air through the machine, and it basically massages your calf. What this does is it helps increase circulation and decrease your um, risk for blood clots after surgery. Right when you come up to the floor, these will be attached uh, whenever you're in bed. We highly encourage ambulation, which is also another way to prevent blood clots. So if you're up moving around, sitting in your chair, you most likely will not have these on. That's when you'll be doing your ankle pumps. Um, but anytime you're in bed for an extended period of time, you should have these SCDs on. Most people like them because it gives you a nice little massage. Other things you will have on, and we talked about it earlier, they'll be placing these TEDs on to your non-surgical leg. If you're a knee and if you're a hip to both legs prior to surgery, these will stay on during the day, come off at night. They help prevent um, blood clots, like I said, so it increases circulation. It also helps with swelling after surgery. You'll be wearing these for a while after your procedure, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, too. Oxygen therapy. Uh, when you first come to the floor, I think I mentioned before, most of you will still be on oxygen therapy, whether it be with a nasal cannula that's in your nose or with the mask. Most people I see come up to the floor with a nasal cannula. Um, and like I said earlier, if you do have a CPAP machine at home, please bring that in. Uh, we do oh, normally use those at night while you're sleeping, or if you're still sleepy from anesthesia, we'll put that on you then also. Things you can do to get off the oxygen is use your incentive spirometer, like we talked about, or doing that coughing and deep breathing. IV therapy, you will have an IV in your hand that they had placed in the pre-op bay. 
That IV will stay in place until you are ready to be discharged. You'll have IV fluids running through your IV for approximately the first 24 hours after surgery, depending on your physician's orders. You're gonna also receive a couple antibiotics through that IV. That's just to help prevent infection and help with the healing process. Um, and like I said, that'll be removed um, be prior to discharge and um, it'll be disconnected once your physician has given us the order to disconnect it and you're taking in adequate oral fluids. The other thing that may be inserted, um, we see them on occasion, is it called a drain. This drain, whether your hip or your knee, will be just kind of settled in near where your surgical site is, and that helps pull out some of the excess fluid and helps with swelling um, and, and drainage after surgery. This will come out the next morning. The night staff will take this out um, when they come in to do your blood work and do your assessment between four and five o'clock in the morning. It's not sutured in, it's just laying right in there underneath the dressing. Blood thinners, each patient's gonna have a specific blood thinner determined by your doctor or physician um, and on your health history. If you are on Coumadin, that one does require lab draws. While you're here, you'll have lab draws done here every morning, regardless you're, if you're on Coumadin or not. Um, if you are on Coumadin, though, you will need to have lab draws done after you go home, too, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Your dosages can change. Um, we'll talk about it a little bit more during the class, but there will be extra education here in the hospital once we know what blood thinner you'll be on. So in your room, our goal is to provide you with individual, individualized level of comfort and monitor your activity tolerance. We're gonna provide you a menu of options to meet your comfort needs. It's called our, our pain menu. Um, this you'll see when you come in through pre-op and it'll continue through your stay here. Um, so each patient has different level of pain, level of comfort. Um, you're, you're not gonna be pain free after surgery, but we need to find that level that you're comfortable with, that you're able to function with, and we will help you find things to help you get there. Medications work good, but there's also many other things that have been proven that work even better sometimes. Our menu options include medication, cold therapy, so ice. We do have an ice machine that'll be going through here shortly. Comfort items, like I said earlier, bring in your music, bring in your DVDs, bring in your books, your crocheting, anything that relaxes you, your coloring. Um, cards, family sometimes is good too. Um, anything that is relaxing to you. We also do have a care channel here at Oakleaf. We have two different channels and they both change to nighttime at about 10 o'clock. I have heard many, many patients talking about how much they enjoy the care channel. It's a lot of scenery, um, wildlife, um, birds, flowers, mountains, streams. It's very, very relaxing. And we have that on in your room when you get to the floor. The care channel can help uh, with reducing your anxiety and pain. Um, and sometimes anxiety can increase your pain. So sometimes just relaxing helps decrease that tension in your muscles and helps um, the pain menu options work a little bit quicker and better. All right, so once you're in your room, you'll participate in therapy. Um, depending on what type of surgery you have and what the physician has ordered, it might be the night of your surgery or it might be the morning after your surgery. Um, physical therapy will come in and they're gonna go through exercises, which there is a video that we had referenced to at the beginning of the class. Um, all those exercises are the ones that are in the video, the ones that you'll be doing here at the hospital. Um, they're also going to be walking with you in the hall using the, uh, the two-wheeled walker, which is pictured here on the slide. Um, if therapy will not be seeing you the night of surgery, then nursing will be getting you up. I think I mentioned earlier, the first time we get up, we're going to get up slowly. We're gonna sit on the edge of the bed. We're gonna take a while, we're gonna stand up, we're gonna see how you're feeling. If you're doing good, we're gonna go for a walk to the bathroom, to the hall. Um, if for some reason you're lightheaded, dizzy, nauseous, things just are not looking good, we're gonna give it a try again a little bit later. Um, just remember, you will be expected to be up for all meals, and we will try um, later to get up and walk in the hall again. Um, using the bathroom, we do have toilet seat risers here at the hospital that we will use if we need to. Um, and dressing changes will be done in your room once, once the doctors have given us permission to change them and they'll be done daily here in the hospital and daily when you go home. We'll be going over that a little bit later. There is also a video on uh, the Oakleaf website on how to do a dressing change for hip and knee. 
Um, we have some lovely models, um, and it's a very, very good uh, video to watch. Highly encourage it. Discharge. Our goal is to assist you in returning home. Um, like I said, discharge planning starts now, um, and we highly, we highly encourage you and want you to return home. Um, care team reviews your recovery and medical necessity. If it is decided after you have, you have had your procedure and there is documentation, physical therapy, nursing, there's information provided that you do need a rehab stay, um, we will help you after your procedure. Just remember, um, insurances vary on coverage and requirements for rehab stay after surgery. Majority of our population here at Oak Leaf goes directly home. Case manager will work with you, rehab facility, and your insurance. Uh, we'll co coordinate home health services if needed. I always tell everybody coming in to have surgery here to always have a second plan. If you're planning on going to facility, have that second plan of having somebody that can help you at home because I've seen a lot of people come in and are planning on going someplace and they end up going home. Um, on a rare occasion, it goes the opposite way. Even though you may have a skilled nursing facility rehab benefit with your insur insurance company, it's not always guaranteed that the insurance company is gonna approve your stay. So like I said, a second option is highly, highly recommended. So we do have some patients that come here to Oakleaf and have what we call a fast track surgery. And that is where they have gone through preliminary stuff such as physical therapy, um, have checked off certain criteria, have everything set up at home, including their medications they would need after surgery, and have had a lot of education done prior. Um, these patients come in that day of, have surgery, come up to second floor, we recover them, and when they are ready, they have a physical therapy session, and when they're ready to go home, they go home the same day after sur same day of surgery. Um, if for some reason um, something occurs and you're just not doing good, you will go home the morning after. Um, the decision will be made for discharge collectively by you, your surgeon, physical therapist, and nurse. Um, make sure you plan to have someone who can help care for you at home. And if that person that is going to care for you at home can also be your driver if you're going to be a fast-track patient, um, it would be very beneficial for them to be there for your discharge instructions too. So day of discharge, um, during your stay, we're going to um, have scheduled any follow-up appointments you will need, including physical therapy, physician appointments. If you need to have blood work drawn, we'll get that information faxed to the clinic and we'll get that initial appointment set up for you. Um, physical therapy will be three times a week or as ordered by your surgeon. Uh, and you'll see your surgeon in about two weeks after surgery. During the day of discharge, we will um, have multiple people going through discharge education with you. Um, a lot of it will be repeat because we, like I said, we're starting discharge teaching now and it's gonna continue throughout your stay. Uh, pharmacists will come in and talk to you, go over the medications they'll be taking. Um, PT will be going over the exercises they'll be doing at home. Um, how to, we'll also go through how to use your cold therapy and I'll go through that here in a little bit. How to do a dressing change. And like I said, there's a video on Oakleaf website and I'll kind of show you what the dressings look like here also. And any other information that is specific to your care, the nurse will be reviewing with you and providing destruct discharge instruction sheets um, upon your discharge teaching. Like I said, during the day of discharge, nurse will be going over discharge teaching with you and the person helping you at home. We highly encourage, um, if it's going to be the person driving you, to be the person that's going to be helping you at home too. We always want to have a second set of ears going through this information. It still can be a little overwhelming even in the day of. So caring for yourself at home, we had kind of already talked about the TED hose a little bit earlier. You're going to want to wear the TED hose in the morning and take them off at night. Um, here at Oakleaf, we do have a little um, sleeve that we can send you home with. Um, this is a tool that we can use to help putting the TED hose on. And they use this in the video that is set up on TED hose application um, on the Oakleaf website. This will go home with you from the hospital. Um, so the TED hose, when you're home, you'll put them on in the morning and take them off at night. If you're going to wash them at home, we highly encourage you not to wash them in the washer and put them through the dryer because they'll shrink and you may never get them on again. If you're going to rinse them out or wash them, take them off at night, rinse them out in the sink, rinse them out really good, dry them between a towel, and then hang them in your shower curtain um, by a fan, someplace so they'll dry out the morning 
so you can put them on the morning after. We normally send you home with just one pair of tet hose because you're only going to wear them until you most likely see your surgeon for the first time. Um, depending on how you're doing and recovering, you may need to wear them longer, um, but most people, only it's only a short time, I'd say two to, two to four weeks. Like I said, you want to hand wash them and let them air dry overnight. And they will help reduce swelling and prevent blood, blood clots at home. Also caring for yourself at home, controlling your discomfort. Um, you may need pain medication for the first few days after discharge. Um, just remember we have that pain menu here in the hospital. We've been encouraging you to use distraction, cold, other things. Um, continue using those other things at home. Um, we do have an ice machine or a cold therapy machine. And that's what this looks like right here. This is our cold therapy machine that you'll come out um, of surgery with and we'll send it home with you um, upon discharge. You might want to think about freezing some small water bottles. Um, it holds up to, I think, four or six water bottles this size. If you can freeze them beforehand, it'll save you on ice at home. Um, this machine here is really easy to set up. I'll kind of go through it here with you. The on-off switch is literally just plugging it into the wall and then there is a small little adapter hole in the back here to turn it on, you plug it in. To turn it off, you unplug it. That's honestly how you turn it on and off. So when you get home, you'll have your frozen water bottles or ice, you'll put that in first, and then you're gonna fill it up to this white line with water, and that's gonna circulate cold water through this tube here that'll be connected to the ice pad. This ice pad, we have Velcro, um, and this sits on your knee or your hip, whatever you're having surgery on, and it'll be Velcroed on or either just laying there or Velcroed on. Um, when you're home, we encourage you to use this ice pad 30 minutes at a time. We don't want to have it on continuously because if your leg gets too cold, it can affect circulation. So 30 minutes at a time. Most doctors recommend four to five times a day. Um, generally speaking, if it hurts, get the ice on and go from there. Use it as a medication, use it as a tool. Um, to take the ice off, you can do one of two things. If it's Velcroed on and you don't wanna get up and unplug it, you can disconnect it right here. These two silver knobs, you push one in at a time and open it, push it in and remove it. You're gonna maybe have a little bit of water dripping out of here because it is a reservoir for the cold water. Um, to reconnect it, you're going to push one in at a time and you should hear a click when it's connected. And I always keep these two silver knobs pointing away from each other, just so it doesn't accidentally leak cold water all over your chair or your bed. We've had that happen a couple times. Um, not so much very often though. <clears throat> the cover just literally clicks on. If you have any questions on that, we will be going through this again here at the hospital. Um, so don't feel like you have to remember it all right now. I'm just gonna pack this up here. When we send you home, we'll have this packed up all, all pretty, good to go. Um, and we'll have done further education with you before you go home. All right, so once you're at home, um, your blood thinners, whether it's Coumadin or Plavix or whatever you're on, aspirin, you're going to want to take them always at the same time every day. Do not take, stop taking them unless if you're directed by your surgeon. Um, if you are on Coumadin, you will need to have twice a week lab draws. Um, and like I said, we'll discuss further your blood thinners when you're in the hospital once we know you have. Um, if you are on Coumadin though, just remember those twice a week lab draws you need to get to. If you're not able to, you'll have to make sure you call the surgeon and let them know. These results will be faxed to your surgeon's office and then they'll contact you if your dose needs to change. That's why it's always important to, ta important to take your blood thinners at the same time every day. Dressing changes. Once you, are going, once you go home, you'll have daily dry gauze dressing changes. Um, we'll be giving you a dressing supply here at the hospital so you don't have to worry about purchasing them ahead of time or getting them at the pharmacy. The kit will look like this. It has three tubs of just dry gauze and then some nice Metaport tape. Um, the RN is going to go through and show you how to do the dressing change prior to discharge. There's also a video on Oakleaf website that you can refer to. It's very good. There's one for hip and one for knee. And there's also instructions in your binder. You may or may not have a robot-assisted robot procedure. Um, 
it depends on your surgeon and um, what they have decided to do for your procedure. If you do have the robot, um, for hips, you'll have three guide pins placed on the opposite hip, hip and it holds the track current. The pins will be removed once the joint is replaced. If you're a knee, um, the, the robot will be secured um, on your lower calf area. Um, there will be stereo strips placed over that surgical, that, that uh, secure site, and there will be a dressing covering that also. You may have some discomfort in that area. Um, I don't hear very often of it, but you may. All right, so when you're doing your dressing change at home, it's really important to have hand hygiene, good hand hygiene. Um, the instructions in your binder and the video that is on our Oak Leaf website goes through that very well also. You're gonna wanna wash your hands before, um, and this could might be you, the patient, or your family changing the dressing. I have plenty of patients change their own dressing also. So you're gonna wash your hands with soap and water before, and then you're gonna take the dressing off, which is literally just almost like a Band-Aid. It's just two pieces of gauze and tape. You're gonna take that gauze off, you're going to wash your hands again with soap and water, and you're going to look at that incision and just make sure it's looking okay, that it's not looking infected, look, it's got um, increased swelling, drainage, redness to that area. Looks good. You're going to wash your hands, and you're going to put new gauze on there. It might be two pieces. It might be three pieces, but you're just going to gently put that new gauze on there and lightly tape it on. You don't want to have a lot of tape on, and you don't want to have the tape super tight because Commonly, you can have some swelling to that area after surgery, um, so you don't want to have it super, super tight so you get tape burns. If you have thick yellow or gray drainage, um, increased redness or severe swelling that's come on suddenly, you need to let your surgeon know right away. Proper nutrition after surgery um, not only helps with healing process, but it also helps with constipation, um, which can be caused by um, anesthesia and narcotics. Um, used for pain management. It's very important to get enough fiber and fluids in your diet, so drinking six to eight glasses of water a day will help with hydration. Um, daily fiber recommendations are listed in your binder. Also, limiting refined and processed foods, which are the good foods such as pizza, fast food, bacon, fries, deli meats, um, will also help um, preventing constipation. Having protein with each meal um, will help with the uh, um, recovery process and help with the healing process of your new joint. Some examples of protein would be meat, fish, poultry, beans, eggs, dairy products, um, nuts and seeds, Greek yogurt. Trying to have some kind of protein with each meal will be very, very beneficial to your healing process. Fruits and vegetables are a very good um, option for fiber. Um, having five servings a day um, will help with constipation, you can choose fresh fruit over juice, try fresh fruit for dessert, add fruit to your cereal, and add vegetables to your sandwich. Other snacks that are good to help um, with fiber and protein are nuts and popcorn. They're both high in fiber, and nuts are a protein source. Um, fruits and vegetables, like I said before, are a good source of nutrition and fiber. Ways to increase your fiber in your diet before surgery um, there are many ways to do that. Um, some examples um, that I'll give here are sprinkling oat bran or wheat germ over your salad, soup, cereal, or yogurt, choosing a breakfast cereal with at least five grams of fiber per serving, looking for bread with the highest amount of fiber per slice, cooking with brown rice instead of white rice, or substituting whole grain noodles for traditional noodles or pasta. You always want to gradually increase the amount of fibers in your food. Um, you Definitely want to start it before surgery. Um, it can help prevent bloating and gas, and you don't want to be extremely uncomfortable right after surgery with bloating and gas if you decide to start it here at the hospital. Um, so start increasing that fiber before your surgery. Um, most Americans only get half the recommended amount of fiber daily, and like I said, there is a list of foods with the amount of fiber in them in your binder for your reference. So if you're having a total hip replacement, you may or may not have some um, specific range of motion restrictions, depending on your surgeon. Um, those are in the front of your binder, and we'll be also reviewing those with you here at the hospital. The risk diminishes with time as a soft tissue in your hip regains strength. Um, like I said, the restrictions are very specific to the surgical approach. It's in the front pocket of your binder. And the physician instruction sheet tells you the range of motion restrictions that you'll most likely have. There is a sheet called resuming activities after total hip arthroplasty that you can refer to as far as resuming your activities. 
pretty much everything is listed on there. Um, if you are having a hip resurfacing, you're going to want to avoid activities that cause pain to the joint and use caution when deep squatting or sitting on a low chair or toilet. Frequently asked questions, um, when can I drive? You need to have your physician's approval and you also need to be off all narcotics. Um, driving is dependent um, upon this and most people, uh, it is several weeks after surgery, also depending on what leg you're having operated on. When can you shower? Um, each physician has specific timeline. Um, so we'll follow your physician recommendations and we'll give you further education that, on that here in the hospital. Um, your shower should be brief. You can get the incision wet, um, that, whereas that handheld shower is, uh, shower head is very, very beneficial. Um, you just don't want to scrub over that incision. Shower should be brief and you should dry off, pat it dry with a clean towel. Frequently asked questions, what is my hip made of? Most are poly, cobalt, chrome, ceramic, and titanium. What is my knee made of? Most are the same, poly, cobalt, chrome, and titanium. Um, if you have total knee surgery, will you be able to kneel again? Yes, you'll be able to kneel. Um, you're gonna wanna kneel on something soft or for a short period of time. And you're also going to want to probably wait a while. It's not going to be something you're going to want to jump out of the gate and do right away. Um, it's going to be about three to six months before you're going to, even going to want to kneel or try to kneel. Are there frequently asked questions? Are there recommendations for visitors in the area? Yes, there are. There's a list of overnight accommodations on the hospital website under the patient information section. Um, they're located in the Eau Claire and Chippewa Falls area. When can I travel on a plane? Um, you will need to have your physician's uh, approval before you can travel on a plane. Um, when going through security, be aware that the sensitivity of the metal detectors varies and your artificial joint may cause the alarm. Uh, tell the screener about your artificial joint before going through the metal detector. Um, when you are on the plane, especially if it's a long flight, we do have patients sometimes that come here from Arizona or wherever, have their surgery done, they stay for a while and then they fly home. So. If you are flying home or traveling home by plane or by car, make sure you get up frequently and go for a walk. Um, in a plane, it's a little bit more limited, confined space, but try and get up and walk to the bathroom and back. Um, wear your TED hose, your white socks, do your ankle pumps while you're in the plane. Um, if, you can fly, if you can afford to fly business or first class, you'll have more room to stretch out. Um, another option would be to choose a seat in the bulkhead which are the rows directly behind partitions that separate different classes, and these uh, rows give you leg room. Here, here are a couple examples of um, x-rays that you may probably have seen in your doctor's office. They probably have shown you your specific x-rays. The first we're gonna be looking at here are the hips, and this is a normal hip x-ray. You can see that there's nice um, space here where the joint moves. There's like enough room for it to slide no discomfort there. This is a hip joint that is bone on bone. As you can tell, there is no gap there whatsoever. This is a post-op surgery hip x-ray. You can tell this person had both hips done. Um, you can see the implants here, nice and smooth. Definitely gonna be way more comfortable than it was prior to surgery. This is for somebody who's having a hip resurfacing. Uh, hip resurfacing is for somebody who maybe doesn't, is not ready for the full-blown hip surgery, um, but they definitely need to have something done. As you can tell, there's not quite as, as much equipment in there, but it is still creating more comfort for how the joint moves. For knees, this is a pre-op knee x-ray. Um, this person has bone on bone. You can see both areas here. And then this is the post-op with the knee implants, creating plenty of cushion here, plenty of comfort for the patient after surgery. If you have further questions on your specific implant, you can always go to the Chippewa Valley Orthopedic website. Each physician has specific information on the to their total joint procedures, whether it be hip or knee, um, including what the um, implant may look like um, and what to expect further after surgery. Um, Thank you for coming and thank you for watching the video.